Lesson 16, For Loops. To follow along with this lesson, you will need to create a new console project and add a new file named main.cpp to it, as we did in Lesson 1. For Loops offer an alternative to while loops and are often more compact. Perhaps the most typical application of a for loop is incrementing an integer through some range of values to access elements of an array. Here we show an example of a for loop that outputs a list of home prices, something we would want if we were looking to make real estate investments. Notice that in the parentheses of the for loop there are three sections delimited by semicolons. There seems to be no standard terminology for these sections, so I've called them initialization, conditional, and update. The first section is the initialization portion. This part is executed when the loop is entered. Notice that we have declared a variable here. When declaring variables like this, the variable has its scope local to the inside of the for loop. The second section is the looping conditional. As long as this statement is true, the loop continues to execute. The statement is evaluated once after the initialization and once at the end of each loop. The third section is the loop update. This part is executed once at the end of every loop just before the looping conditional is checked. To compare the functionality and show just how much more economical the for loop can be, here's the functionally equivalent while loop. Notice that the outer braces are necessary to provide the proper scope on the index variable i. However, even without the outer block, the while loop still requires two additional lines of code and is much more error prone because of that. All three sections of the for loop are optional, and we can eliminate any one of them to suit our needs. In fact, we can write a totally blank for loop like this. In this case, the loop runs forever. Generally, we would want to be sure to have some way to internally break out of the loop, though. Here we have added initialization and update to the for loop. The if statement checks the conditional before we use the return statement to return from the main function so that our loop does not run forever, even though we have no conditional in it. In addition to eliminating sections, we can put multiple statements into each section. Going back to our original example, we have put locations in our array along with the prices. Here the first four numbers are the prices we had originally, and the last four numbers are corresponding locations by district number. Notice that the for loop syntax requires that we use commas to separate the initialization and update statements. In the initialization, we declare two variables i and j. j is initialized to four so that it starts at the district numbers. During the update, both i and j are incremented so that i runs from 0 to 3 and j runs from 4 to 7. This concludes the lesson.